Hello, John Robertson again, uh, your volunteer librarian for OSCAR. This is the final video on the BC Antenatal Record 2020. We're going to have a look at the attachments page and the reference pages. So, as I mentioned earlier, we can go into the attachment pages and we can actually add medications from their chart and allergies from their chart and any additional information that was stored in their chart. So, for instance, if I've gone to part one, and in part one in allergies, I double clicked here and I said, and it said, see attached page for the allergies. It reminds me to go to the attachments page to add that in. So back to the attachment page and we go click allergies here. And if we click this button, it will put in whatever allergies you put in in their patient's chart. Now the same is true for medications. If you've put any medications into the patient's chart, you can click here and it'll add those in. And if you have anything else in their social history, in their family history, their medical history, any of those, you can add those in by simply clicking on these and any reminders and any risk factors. If we uncheck the button, all of that goes away. Now, of course, if you have filled one of these out, one of these attachment pages out, obviously, if you're supplying the information to somebody else or to a hospital, when you print the pages out, you'd also want to print out the attachment page. We can click save here, and then that information is saved in with the rest of the antenatal record. We can also have a look at the reference pages. If we go to page one of the reference pages, this walks you through what's expected in terms of what you fill out on page one and page two and gives a bit more clarification of how to fill these out. The physical exam page also walks you through the expected Health Canada weight gain recommendations for singleton pregnancy, and then the weight gain that would be expected in the second and in the third trimesters. There is also a list of discussion topics that you can go through and you can check these off as you've done them with the patient. And again, if you're checking these off, you should forward them on to the other individuals that are helping with the management of the patient. If we go to reference page two, As I mentioned previously, we do get the depression scale and the symphysis fundal height graph. These discussion topics actually are the same as what you saw on the previous page. Uh, so you can do those check boxes on either of these two pages, either reference page one or reference page two. Then once we've done all of this, we can print and we get select all and select all of them. You'll notice there's no checkbox for reference page one. It's because we haven't saved anything there, um, but it will allow us to print all the other pages. We can select which pages we would prefer to print. And then once we click on print, It'll move on to creating that PDF for us. And we can either save the file, we can open it with uh, a reader like Adobe Acrobat Reader, or we can open it with Firefox. 
and from there we can then print the information that was saved for us. So there we go. That's our form. And this is the date of ultrasound. Um, sorry, the date of the due date expected by the ultrasound. The information that we have put into the various parts of the chart. The reference page. Their medication list, their allergy list. You'll notice that I took out the other history list and it's not listed here at all. If we had put in their social history and family history, there would be another section that would fill in right here with that information. And that comes to the end of our review of the antenatal record. I hope this is helpful for you either as an introduction or as a reminder if at some point in time you wish to review these videos. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.